Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Tell me something good. Wow, wow.
Hey, hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey, and today I get to sit with my friend Krista Bartek, and uh, she's going to be our co-host today. I, I, I'm, I'm way excited. Um, listen, the truth is, is that I reached out to Krista not too long ago, and um, about uh, co-hosting a couple podcasts with her. Um, uh, she's she's got a um, an interesting take on the industry, and 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 she's a she's an incredible educator. Um, I've seen her up on stage. I know that she's traveling a lot with uh, uh with Jacob Kahn and and that whole cl clan of clowns. Is that fair to say, Clan of Clowns, Krista? Clan of Clowns. That's very fitting. That's yeah. very fitting. It totally is, right? So uh, that voice that you hear is Krista. Krista, man, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, Corey. Thanks for having me. Happy to be on here today. Of course. So, uh, so when you and I had some private conversations and about like who you'd like to talk to, um, you know, you brought up our guest today, um, and and it, you had an interesting take on it because your take on today's guest was like. He's been through the shit, but he handled it with grace. And like, I, I kind of want to comment, you know, it's so easy, I think, to like, if you've been through the shit, certainly on social media, that it's very easy to be to bite back. And it's very easy to, um, to present yourself, uh, at least for me, like, not necessarily present yourself in the way that you want to be remembered forever. But but that was the opposite of our guest today. Yeah, it's I mean, social media as a hairdresser nowadays, it's everything. And I think one of the things that kind of drive people away from that is the negativity that can be received on social media. So our guest today received that and handled it with such grace. And that's something I want to talk about. So I'm excited to introduce Alfredo. Alfredo, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so honored that you wanted to talk to me. Honestly, it's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, the number one thing I hear, especially in classes now, and I'm sure you get this from hairdressers too, is showing up on social media. It is scary. It is nerve wracking. You're scared to put yourself out there. You just never know. So I mean, how long have you been on social media? How long have you been doing it? So I actually hated social media and it hates a strong word, but like I was, I, I don't want to say hate, I was very against going on social media in the beginning. Um, and I was working for a brand called Brazilian Blowout. And it was way, this is, we're talking 2016. And, uh, you know, things were changing. Celebrity is still relevant. But everybody was like looking to these hairstylists. At the time, video wasn't even, it was like, I think there was maybe 15 second video. Maybe that hadn't even happened yet. And it was just these beautiful photographs. And a lot of times you didn't even know who the artist was behind it. Um, and I was fascinated by it and I, I knew I needed to figure it out because we were launching a product and we knew that we were going to have to figure out what was going on on Instagram at the time to make it work. And so I, I started my account then, um, but more with the intention of connecting with other artists, not, not becoming, you know, one myself, if that makes sense. Um, but it, I really built my social presence, I think, through collaborating with those artists at the time. Uh, we built like an influencer team at that brand. And there was like, I think almost a hundred, some, some were paid. We were one of the first brands to actually pay artists back then. And I'm like, think about where we've come now, 10 years later. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. It was like Pulp Riot was just coming out. Remember like with David and Alexis and that, that whole team of artists. And then, um, and a lot of the artists were like, Hey, you're so good at doing hair. Why don't you, you know, do this model with us? Why don't you collaborate with us on us? And of course that was super fun for me. Um, and then all of a sudden I started building a following from everybody back then when you tagged each other, I think you saw a lot more growth, a lot faster. Um, mm -hmm. and so, so what it's been, it's going to be like nine years, almost 10 well, years. I just found out you're in your fifties, right? Oh, oh God. We're going to talk about, right? that. I guess, this wait, wait, edit, edit, delete. no, I'm God. just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I know. You know, I don't have a problem with, with my age, but I, I didn't like, We'll, we'll get to it, but like I recently, yeah, I was like, guys, you know, 50, you know, but yeah. Like I would have never guessed. I, I guessed 35. Well, thank you. I'm not okay. even tooting your I'll horn. take it. Thank <laughs> you for that. Hopefully it stays Crazy. that way. I don't know. I don't know why. Like it's, I think it's in my genes. I'm Sicilian. Okay. Uh, Italian. And um, I don't know my family, like a lot of my aunts and stuff, like, like even some that are unfortunately no longer with us they like looked so like young they have like really good skin so I'm assuming I'm hoping that I got that in the jeans <laughs> I don't know well you I know, think you're off to a good start skincare routine I'm like I don't know I wash my face with bar soap I use some keels and I call it a day That's bar soap <laughs> <laughs> true story yeah so I don't know 
Get out of here. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go put on my like $50 moisturizer, you know, my retinol, whatever else I'm using over there. But you can I do, do use your Kiehl's. Soap. I do use Kiehl's. And I'm not going to lie. I do do Botox and stuff like that, like minor stuff. Yeah. Preventative. Incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, incredible. That, that's the advantage of just being a guy, right? We just like, we just, bought, oh, yeah. Bought, I without, mean, you know, we're not without all the effort. Yeah. And I think there's something to be said for aging gracefully for men and women. Oh, like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to Pamela Anderson is like such a perfect example. I, I think she's absolutely, I mean, we're getting off topic, but I think she, I just, <laughs> I love her and I just love her. Well, you know, when she did the makeup free thing and everything, I just thought it was so empowering and, and she looks so beautiful, you know, just being herself, right? So I listen, I love yeah. that. I, I, love <laughs> that. I love that she was, I mean, it, it is, like it, I, is I love it. It, it totally is, but I think it is on topic because, because I also think, you know, I think what we're going to get down to is that, is that there, there's risk in this game. There's risk in the, in, in, in the social media game. And she took that risk and, and to your point looks, yeah. amazing. you know, yeah. looks amazing. And, and, you know, it is a scary it is scary to kind of put yourself out there. And I remember even Alfredo, like um, in 2016, 2017, you know, there was a big push about putting yourself out there, you know, and, 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 and generally as the industry, we embraced each other and we held each other up and, and, and certainly something has happened. And I don't know if it's from like the shutdown time or whatever, but, but, but it slowly has kind of shifted to be a little bit more venom filled, you know, um, I, I, I think, I don't know. I, I don't want to put anything more into it than that. Uh, is is that kind of what you're tasting, seeing, feeling? Well, if you would have talked to me like six, seven months ago or a year ago, um, I would have said unequivocally, yes, the venom. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I think it's still there, but I'm actually starting to see a, a shift in another direction. I think it's been really tough, especially this year. I mean, obviously we know I went through it. We'll get into that in a minute, but um, not just me, so many artists on different levels in different ways. Um, a lot of negativity, a lot of hiding behind your keyboard um, with the negative comments. And sometimes, you know, there's a, also, say there's a big difference between coming on someone's page or post and saying, this color wasn't my favorite or, I don't like that haircut on her or I think it looks a little too warm. I would have went with a more ash tone. I have zero problem with that. In fact, I welcome that. That's called reality. I don't expect everyone to love everything all the time. And I want healthy conversations. At least I don't know. I can only speak for myself. Sure. I don't take that as a venom filled comment. I take that as a true reaction artist subjective and it, it's, you know, we should have those conversations. I, I'm usually like, thank you. I'll reply, you know, thank you. Oh, what, you know, they'll say, I would have done this formula. I said, oh, that maybe I'll try that next time. I think that's, I never take offense to that. It's coming on with what you talk about, the venom. Like it's, it's in such a negative, trying to tear you down, embarrass you, almost shame you with from a keyboard hiding. A lot of times it's not even the person's actual account. You know, that is a very different thing. Um, or saying something about the model or client in your chair, um, saying something about you, like it's when it becomes personal, mm -hmm. you know, you're the worst hairdresser. I don't know why anybody wants to work with you or something. Those things, that, that's a very different thing. That's where the venom comes in. And I think it's really important that we acknowledge that there's two different, those are two very, two very different things. And I think sometimes people think anything that isn't loving what you do is a negative or troll comment. I just, I don't feel that way. I think we need to really be very clear of that there is a difference. It's okay to not like something. I know some people say, just keep scrolling. But I think if it's constructive, for me, it's okay. But what, I, what I'm seeing now is um, I think people are tired of it. Not everyone, but enough of us are tired of it. I think some of us are speaking on it in, in a certain way that's accepted. Um, and I'm starting to see a lot of hairstylists start to get a little more courage. I think sometimes they were afraid before to come on and defend someone or to say, hey, that's not okay, because they didn't want to then be subjected to that sort of behavior. Sure. But I'm starting to see hairstylists like that community that we that you were talking about from the early days or whatever, the, the early days. The early days. Uh, I'm starting to see a shift. I am. 
on, especially like I'm noticing it on my page where hairstylists are starting to come, like be a little bit more vocal that they're tired of that sort of things in our industry and that we are better than that and wanting to set a different example. That's what I'm seeing. How does, how does that feel to see the difference and the change in where the industry first started and people kind of holding back because they didn't want to get the same hate and now people are speaking up. Like, how does that feel to finally see that in the oh, industry? Feels amazing. <laughs> I mean, do you mean to see a shift positive? Yeah, yeah. And I hope I'm right. Like, finally, I mean, what I'm seeing it's it's and it's it's only been the last for me. And maybe it's because of what what I've been through this year and the sort of evolution I've went through from that and what I've learned from it. You know, maybe it's the way that I've that I'm speaking about the subject. Maybe that's why I'm getting that back. I don't know. Um, but it, it, it definitely feels good that it's happening because I became a hairdresser because of the community. I became a hairdresser. It was the first place that I felt accepted. I was bullied a lot in school and really terribly. And when I went to beauty school, it was the first time I felt like I belong somewhere. So, and the salon was my safe space. Um, and then when social media first started, it was like, we were such a force and everybody supported each other, but it was new. So we felt like we were all taking over the world together. I think we all felt the opportunities were endless. And like together, there was nothing that we couldn't do together, most of us. And then I think you're absolutely right. I don't know if it's just COVID. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of things happened. It's just, it's just my take on it. Big brands got involved. Not that that's a bad thing. But they started realizing the value in hairstylists that had followings. And obviously some followings are growing faster than others. And it starts to change. Like, you know, people start, some people start getting a larger following and more engagement. Some people maybe fall off a little bit and lose their way. Maybe they stop posting. You know, there's a million different reasons why somebody grows, somebody doesn't grow. Some of it's a little bit of luck, right? It's it's all of the above. I think when the big brands came in and started offering these larger contracts to individuals throughout, I'm talking, you know, all the big brands, the stakes get higher. It starts to change. It's not as, you know, as really fun in the beginning <laughs> when you're yeah. just going to hair yeah. shows together and going to somebody's salon and creating a bunch of content. It's going viral, but you know, you're making a little extra money, but you're really, you know, it, it changes the game. And I, and I think that is probably where it started. Right. There's, I think, you know, I, I think it's a piece that you're missing there, Alfie too. And that, yeah. that is that, when when social media first listen and we've both been in the industry long enough to remember like when you went to a redkin thing it was always sam sitting there representing red representing redkin when you went to a yes. well thing it was always yes. the doves that were there representing yeah, sonia dove uh, you know every brand had their, really their stars their platform their stars. artists and and it was almost impossible to break through to that. It was almost impossible as a hairstylist to get attention from any brand when the when these guys were standing on the top. This is no shade on that whole thing. This is just it's just the shift. And then what happened with social media? And and I think I got on Instagram in like 2014. And the first thing that I noticed that like there are superb hairdressers all across this land. It's not just to the four faces that we saw at all these shows or at these at these brand stuff. And then, and, and I think that there was this like more community because we were hairdressers supporting hairdressers in the realest of ways. And then, like you said, and then after that, the brand said, how can we benefit from this? Because we're losing this narrative a little bit. So how can we do this? So we bring in the big names, we bring in the Alfies, we bring in the, the whoever, and then this, and then to your point, I think that's where the stakes started getting higher. Well, that shook everything up, too, because a lot of these incredible, I mean, I'm still Sam Vian, I'm probably one of his biggest fans. I think he's absolutely incredible. Listen, I'll go watch him any day of the week, you know, right. um, sign me up. He's still one of the, he's the greatest, you know, but, um, and I think Sam always got it. Sam was, Sam's always so welcoming, but it was hard because I was a platform artist, but I was able to transfer into social media. So a lot of people don't know about me at Brazilian. I was like their top stage artist at all the shows I had, I didn't even have a page in the beginning. Um, that guy. But I think that that also caused some unrest, right? Because you've got these people who, these legacy artists who are so talented on stage having to now compete with these, what they call influencers and the brands, it, it you know, it, it's a lot of layers, right? That started happening. The industry really got shaken up from, you know, shaken up from social media. 
And then I think what happened more recently is some artists that maybe wanted to work with the brands because there's only so many spaces didn't get there. Just like anything, just like anything in life, any job, any career, there is, you know, there's different levels of where you, where you get to with your success, right? And it takes hard work. Um, and then I think in COVID, yeah, we lost a lot. A lot of people struggled. And I think it started to cause a lot of separation in the industry and some resentment maybe mm -hmm. um, with some, right? And we started seeing it play out on social media. I mean, that's just my, I don't know what you both think, but, you know, it's hard to put your finger on it, but there definitely was this shift over the last few years where you could almost feel the frustration and anger from a lot of the stylists out there. And they were taking it out. Not everyone, because there's a lot of love always in our industry. But obviously, sometimes negativity and anger is the louder voice. Always, it seems it goes like. Back to what I said of the people who are maybe a little afraid to come out and say, hey, I don't think that's a very nice thing to say because they don't want to have that same negativity towards them. But I did start to notice it really pick up to your point over the last few years, probably definitely 2020, 2021, 2022. Um where it really got to a, a point that I'd never seen before. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting hearing you like talk about that and the negativity and, you know, the comments and everything, because I feel like social media nowadays, the algorithm, right? We're always fighting the algorithm and how to beat it. And what I'm finding now is social media is pushing the content that is getting the hate comments or pushing the content that has the negativity. And I don't know if you've noticed this between Instagram or TikTok, there's a different audience. So Instagram, I feel like they're a little bit more careful with their words. And then TikTok, there's like, I mean, there's no shame in what they're like. Do you see that? Do you notice that? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course I do. I mean, um, I mean, for me, it's fluctuating right now. But at first, yes, with uh, TikTok, the more negative comments you get, the bigger the post gets and the more viral it goes. Um, so I, I definitely saw that because, you know, I've got a huge following on TikTok now and a lot of my most viral posts, if you look, I have posts that have 10,000 comments, 15,000 comments. Oh. You know, there could be 2,000 of the most negative comments. That's a lot of negative comments. <laughs> That's but a lot then, of but then there's like 13,000 comments of like, I don't know why everybody's saying this. It's beautiful. This is like, I want to take this to my hairdresser or I think the color looks beautiful. So it almost causes, and it's, they start, you know, going back and forth with each other um, a little bit. So you're, you're absolutely right. Now on Instagram lately, I've started to notice it pick up a little bit with the negative because I used to notice no negative comments on Instagram, like very few, it would happen. Like, but meaning like three or four, yeah. you know, yeah. that you're like, wow, like that's, that's harsh, you know? <laughs> and I leave them. I don't delete them. I don't delete comments unless they're belittling my model or saying something that I feel is, um, you know, something that is just really ugly, you know, like about, yeah. society or you know something that i is just completely against my beliefs i will delete delete it and block them um but it has to be on that level do you know what i mean yeah. um if they're saying yeah. something about me i usually leave it <laughs> no, I, <laughs> you're like, like boost the algorithm keep uh, going whatever no, i love julia fox like i don't even know julia fox but like there's an interview with her i, I actually used her voice over where she's like i i want them i want to leave that comment up so they should be embarrassed by themselves so I'm gonna leave it up there so everyone can see you know and <laughs> I agree I think like if it's really you and you're putting that up there like here let let people see who you are because you know I don't know that's I, I just I just leave it um I don't take it down uh. that's listen I, I about two years ago, I guess it's about two years ago. You, you'll correct me. You corrected me already. But um, about two years ago, you and Phil started doing these amazing makeovers. And I thought that they were like, like from hair disasters to like these amazing makeovers. And, um, you know, as a fan of you guys, it, it was really cool to kind of watch you 
do that, do those makeovers. And, and I, ju I just thought, A, it was very, very cool. B, it was very inspirational. A and C, it was just like awesome, awesome content. You know, so you go ahead. How did, no, no, I mean, so how it's been. Start, how did that start? It's been a, let's see, May, June, July, August. Oh my God. So, so it's been a year and a half. So you're pretty close since we did the first one. It was May 2023. 20, and, you know, I had been at L'Oreal, remember, for three years. So I went corporate for a while during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, New which, York. Which was fun <laughs> to start a job corporate like that. And, and, um, in the middle of a pandemic. But um, I learned a lot and it was a great experience. But I, I realized that I, I missed being out on, st I missed being out with the hairdressers. When you work corporate, there's a lot of amazing people that work at all these brands, but like you are very confined into your workspace and eight to 10 hours, sometimes 12 hour days. And you're on the calls like this constantly. It's really hard to, my content, my page kind of stagnated and I wasn't doing as much social media, which I knew, but I missed it. I realized that I wasn't ready to, I knew there was more, there was more to my journey outwardly, you know? And so I talked to them and said, I really want to go back. I, I, I think that this was great, but I also saw, I just didn't see that. I, I came in with this very naive that I was going to change the industry in L'Oreal and change corporate. And it's way too big. I, I, I don't have enough. Like I can't do it. Like, it's just, I wish like in a different life, a different world, but those entities are so big and so many layers, like for a, one person is not going to, change the you know the corporate giant like that <laughs> so when I realized that I, I came back and I really needed to find my way on social media and I saw that video I was at a press event and I had just moved back to LA I had only been home for like two months so I was really trying to find my way back into social media I was very lucky that it hadn't died but I needed to like reignite my audience and I saw exactly what you're talking about I, I started looking more at social media and I saw all this negativity and I saw you know, and when Steph, that's the first girl's name, uh, we saw her video and I was with this hairstylist named Alex Pardo, um, Alex Pardashian, and he's an extension artist. He works at Mesh Salon with Tracy Cunningham. And he's, you know, we saw people making fun of Steph, like our people, mm. like this is why you go to a professional hairstylist and that's what you get. And it was that, that mean, you know, venom. But this time towards a, a person about DIY. This, uh, and we said, you know, what if we actually help her? Instead of doing like a reaction video or a, you know, like to get views, what if we do a video offering to help her? We had no idea where she lived. We didn't know what we were getting into. And we were probably insane. But we both did a video and she saw it. And that video went viral, like viral. I think 40 million views or something. Just our video offering to help and I think we realized then what I'm realizing even more now is that people want to see kindness on social media there's so much negativity out there not just in hair and just life like we don't have enough time in this podcast of all the things going on around the world right now and on every single level there's a lot of unrest in the world and so we thought this is something positive that people can enjoy so um, we ended up flying stuff out from Kentucky to Los Angeles and attempted to save her hair. And obviously it went extremely viral, but we thought it was going to be a one-time thing. We, you know, we just thought, let's show people a different way. Um, that was our inspiration behind it. So and I'm glad you guys, it seemed like everyone really enjoyed it. And then all of a sudden we started getting tagged. Like a few weeks later, I'm getting tagged in Cap, the bride, you know, help her, help her. <laughs> and I think it was then that we realized like, I think the first two, we thought they were both kind of one-offs, but then it's just continued to happen. We're almost two years later. I, I mean, I get so many messages. It's kind of overwhelming. At one time I had a hundred thousand DMs on TikTok. And if I open them, I'm not joking. I can show you the screenshot. It's insane. It's very stressful to see that. When I open them, they're almost all like, hi, my name is so-and-so and I live in blah, blah, blah. I did this to my hair and this, and it's like a law of like what happened or what happened with that maybe a hairstylist that was new that shouldn't have, you know, done a chemical service on them that they didn't understand. Um, it's, it's everything all over the map, but. Um, Krista, yeah, I'm really, terrified that one of those are my clients. <laughs> no, but it, it really, it really turned into, um, it's obviously turned into a thing where 
I think it's really that people, people are rooting for people and they want to see, they want to see good in the world. They want to see people help each other. And it feels good to be able to be in a position that we can do these sometimes. Sometimes the brands do help us. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes we do it out of our own. We do the whole thing ourselves. It, it just depends. Um, but the brands can be lovely and, you know, but then what starts to happen is you see the other side, the negative side, and I don't understand it, <laughs> but they start judging the clients, they judge us and they want to tear it down. Um, and I, I honestly don't know where that came from. When you, when you did Stephanie the first time was, um, did, were there, uh, once that went viral, did you see uh, negative stuff on that or was that all, or was most saw, of that? I saw negative towards her. Mm. The first one towards us, they had never seen anything like that before, I think. So, it, and I could have missed it because it was so big, but like, it was so much positivity. Like I, I grew, that was crazy too, what I wasn't expecting. I had a following on TikTok, but it was a little bit lower than Instagram, but it was up there. Mm -hmm. I think it was 300,000 followers. It's respectable, you know? Um, but from Steph, I think I got to 700K. So I grew in a matter of month, a month, 400,000 followers on TikTok. That's insane. It was just, every time I went back on my page, it was just like higher, higher, higher. And everybody was like, follow, follow. I'm follow, I'm following you because I want to see how this ends, you know? And and um, it, it just turned into such a big thing. Steph as well. Steph grew like 300,000 followers from it, just from being in that situation as the client. So um, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that, but it was all in a very positive way of like, they were rooting for us. Mm. You know, I did see for, towards her a little bit of like, you know, Oh, you know, I don't know. I, I can't even remember, but just kind of putting her down of like, Oh, I, like they were angry that she was getting this opportunity. They didn't feel that she deserved it because she did this to herself type thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I count that up to more jealousy Jealousy is a very real yeah. emotion <laughs> and we see it play out on social media a lot. Um, but I didn't see it in, in those. Um, I saw it in the clients with Kat, the second one. Also, she was a bride and there was a lot of, why would you get a Japanese hair straightener at a salon two weeks before your wedding? Like you, you know, like you don't deserve to get this help or why, you know, and there was a lot more to her story. You can only tell so much of someone's story in 90 seconds or two minutes you know, I mean, I won't get into it now, but there's a whole reason why she had to wait. I mean, you're planning a wedding. She was, you know, she was trying to make everything perfect. Things happened. She, she read about the salon. She did her due diligence. She read all the reviews. You know, she did everything you would suggest. Yeah. So now how did you guys find people after that? Like, I mean, obviously your DMs were flooded. You probably got so many messages. Where, how did you pick, like, or did they? Oh, most of them. Instagram? Most of them happen from TikTok and it happens where I start getting tagged over and over. Sometimes it's, it's just me. Sometimes it's me and Philip. Sometimes, you know, it's different people that are, have been on this team with us, but they'll just tag. I'll just see, I'll get at, 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 and I'll see the same little thumbnail in my notifications and I can tell I'm like, Oh God, what's going on? <laughs> That's really how it <laughs> happens. The video goes viral and I see it or, or it pops up on my for you page. Um, that's how most of these happen. Um, the reason some people will ask me, why don't you, you know, why does it, why do they always have to do a, a video, a viral video? Well, that's, it's not that they have to, it's just, that's how I see it. I'm sure there's videos that I haven't seen that didn't go viral. Like obviously not every person that goes on social media saying I ruined my hair goes viral, but it's just, I see it. Um, and of course I connect with it. Usually if I start seeing like all the conversation, I read a lot of the comments. And when you see your name, like hundreds of times in a video, I don't do all of them obviously, but that that's how most of them happen. There's been a few that have gotten lucky that we've seen a DM or gotten like a, a DM video of them talking to us. Um, like there was one named Victoria. I don't know if you remember her, but like with the extensions that were all matted in her hair, mm. um, she didn't, she doesn't even have social media, but that was, a that's, it's a lot harder, obviously for us to see it. And cause you know, in DM it's hard when somebody writes you a letter, 
I can't see the hair. I don't know if it's, you know, is it real? Is it not? Like, that's a lot of people. So when they do a video on social media, obviously it's really easy to connect. You're hearing their voice. You're hearing they're, they're obviously upset, distraught. You're under, you're feeling their emotion. Um, you're seeing the reaction from the audience. So obviously you can, you're any of us, like I, I connect with that a lot more. It's a lot easier for me to understand what's going on because they're, they're telling their story. And then I, I usually follow that up with a phone call, a FaceTime. I don't just with Steph, we did it off the cuff with, cat the second one we did off the cuff with the, with the ones since then especially since you know we'll get to what happened earlier this year i don't just go on anymore and say ha you know i'm gonna save your hair i ask them i usually dm them first and say hey i saw your video i'm interested in helping you um i'll respond to you if you're okay with it if you feel comfortable mm -hmm. um And of course, like so far, nobody's told me no. They're always like, oh my God, I can't believe it. You know, like they, they're, they need the help. Um, when you say respond, you mean, you mean publicly respond to them? Yeah. 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 I used to just publicly respond and I'm not saying I wouldn't, but now I'm a little bit more cautious. Like I just, I look at their page. I look at their history. <laughs> I look and see like what other things they've posted. I, at first I wasn't, it was so new. And we really just wanted to see more kindness on social media. And I was just rolling with it. I'd never done anything like this before. Obviously, like now we've done like 12 of these, I think. So you, you learn, you learn from it. And I'm, I'm a little bit more because so many people are asking, like just really trying to get to know the person a little bit more and, and also talk to them first too, to hear a little bit more about their story before I jump in, if that makes sense. Yeah, you had posted a video recently about uh, all of the, I mean, all the women you've helped. And I didn't realize how many times you've done this. And it's so cool. Do you ever see people inspired by what you do and like tag you and do the same kind of makeover for clients? So you know what? It's so funny that you asked that because I always thought that everyone would start doing it, you know. Cause there's like yeah. certain things that like, can happen to all of us. Like, you know, and, and I, I always say like when artists come to me and say like, it's so silly, but like we, sometimes our industry can be catty, right? Like, look at this video, this person's copying me. Like, you know, like friends I have in the industry, if I'm at a show and I'm always like, aren't you flattered? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't care. You know, Philip and I do are like, oh, like everyone does that now. And, you know, I'm not even going to say like, I don't know, maybe I didn't do it first. Who knows? Who cares? Like, you know, we're all just out there making content that we hope people enjoy and that we hope it resonates and inspires people and that we teach them something in the process. I mean, at least that's my, my goal, make them feel something. I've done my job. Um, but with this, I was sure, you know, and I was, I would love it. We need more of it. There's so many people. I think that's, I, I'm realizing it reignited my passion for hair. Like, I'm like, this is why I'm a hairdresser. Like our job is to make people feel beautiful, lift them up in their most difficult times through beauty, like through hair. And what a better way to do it than, than what we're doing here with these ladies that have been through a lot in their life and are going through this really difficult moment. Hair is such a huge part of a, you know, woman's identity or a human's identity, honestly. Um, so, but I think that's what we're doing is so crazy. <laughs> and like, I don't know if crazy is the right word, but it's so stressful and it's so difficult. Um, I lose sleep at night before these things. And so many things can go wrong. You're putting yourself in such a stressful situation. We're flying them out. You have one day to get this right. And then they're going back home, sometimes across the US or something. So many things can go wrong. And that's why we do it with a team in most cases because that it hair there's nothing better than one strong hairdresser is two or three or four we really collaborate like honestly even though let's say i'm leading color alex will come in if he see hey what do you think like we we really do all collaborate everything from the cut with philip to you know makeup and just making sure that we're all working together sometimes we jump on and help each other with extensions or color because it's intense you know, some of these are 14 hour, you know, days. We start at like 8 a.m., 9 a.m. And we're still there at 10 p.m. at night finishing this hair. Um, so I think that maybe we haven't seen it yet because <laughs> it's a lot.
I, I'm not going <laughs> to speak for Philip because uh, you know he he's pretty much the last one to go. So if it's ten or eleven o'clock at night, that that's Philip time, man. You know. So it depends. I mean, there's times where he'll cut. I mean, but usually we're doing extensions in a lot of these because of the damage. But it depends. But yeah, most times he's last, especially the finishing. Yeah. Um, but I film most of it. Like I'm the one that films most of it, unless I'm the one doing. So that's a whole other job, right? Because we're capturing it. So um, we're all in it, honestly, from the second we start to the end, because somebody's having to film. Somebody's having, you know, we're all like doing something. Um, I just give a shout out to Philip on your podcast, Alf Alfie. That was it. Hey, yeah, so, good. I so, love Philip, as you know. So I, hi, I, Philip. He's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna set the stage for you a little bit. So uh, walk us huh? through, walk us through what happened in March, and you know from the very beginning, like from when you heard, and then let's move forward from there. So you're so we're talking about when one of them went south. Not exactly positive. Would I I would say would be that. I mean you, you did this for I a mean, reason to be to 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 to, to represent the industry uh, the best that you knew how and then I'll tell you what I know because I I don't know that I'll ever understand how it happened. You know what I mean? But I can just tell you what I know. But they were all going really well. We had done eight by this point. And there was a girl named Stella whose mother passed away and she was more of a color correction. Her hair didn't break off. It was about to break off. And her she DIY'd and did all this stuff, put splat in her hair. And she was just really frustrated. And we saw her video and we decided to fly her out. And she was so lovely. And at that time, I got really busy with work. You know what I do. I'm Sometimes I'm in different countries and I'm doing these hair saves and I'm on stage at the shows and I'm doing clients, believe it or not, still. It's a lot, right? Editing the videos, working with, you know, I'm with six different brands right now. So sometimes I've got shoots with them. And so it was that kind of a time where I was just bouncing around. And I saw this video. I mean, her name is Taylor. I'm not afraid to say her name. Um, and I honestly, it was probably the one that I did my research on the least amount. Like with Stella, I knew she had had a big loss in her life. I knew her whole story about how it happened. She went to Walmart and Sally's and all the things she bought. She talks about it in her video. And I was like, oh, wow. Like she is in a pickle, you know, <laughs> she really just kept going and made a bad situation worse and ended up, you know, in dire straits with um, Taylor. I was in an airport and we already had Stella scheduled and I never do two of these in a row. So I was, I'll call it overconfidence because <laughs> they were all going so well you know it's it's exciting when you're doing something on social media that people identify with and it's doing really well it's fun it's like a tell it was like a series of these things of this television show and and it felt really good like we cried like not to be dramatic but sometimes at the end the models crying we're crying even philip like you know philip's like stoic we get emotional in these things seeing these these women their confidence regain and how grateful they are and you know like so I saw her video, Taylor, and she's crying and, you know, her hair had all broken off and it looked like straw. And, you know, I, I think I got on a whim. I got, you know, I saw the video and I didn't look at her page at all. I didn't even know that she had a huge following herself. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you chose her because I honestly at that moment didn't know. I think I was in Dubai at like a, you know, like in the lounge and if you see my video, I think you can see I'm in the, I literally just did it. It was one of the ones that I did not, I did not DM. I didn't ask questions. And I just said, hey, if you're interested, on, I'm at an airport. Well, we scheduled her the next day, which is already mistake number one. <laughs> I mean, like I'll own my part and what went wrong on my end. These are huge. These are such big deals. Like it, it takes a lot out of you. So we had Stella. Stella went amazing and she was so happy at the end. She just embraced me. I'll never forget it. It was like late at night and we're both crying. You know, she said, I've never, nobody's ever made me feel beautiful. She told me at the end, I've never felt beautiful. Like my whole life is what she told me at the end. And it just, I went home just feeling great, you know, like to, you know, that's what we do. We're beauty professional, you know, like we, we, we had that moment with her, that breakthrough. And so the next day we came in and, and it was Taylor and, you know, I'm not going to, uh, talk about her character or anything like that because I spent one day with her I, I'm not gonna you know make things up about somebody <laughs> whether she she did but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go to that level because I, I don't know her that well 
Um, and I will tell you, you know, it was definitely difficult, the, the hair. Um, but we had conversations before and everything seemed great. We seemed like we were all on the same page, even that morning. We always talk before we film. So there's a lot of things you don't see now. We're actually filming after this situation. We film everything because <laughs> we're like, we had a lot of conversations. And, and in the end, I actually felt great about it because she seemed to feel great about it. But I will say it was a difficult one. The color wasn't taking, like there was, I was feeling it. And all, it was just, you know, it was one of the first ones where I felt like at the end, we had that one day and I was like, well, we got it. And I did say like, you're probably gonna, like, it's, I think it's gonna fade. We can find somebody where you live, blah, blah. I, I will say, I'm not gonna sit here and say it was my best work ever, but I was actually proud of, I was proud of what we accomplished that day. I thought nothing of it, you know? Um, and she and I spoke all week. That's all I, all I can tell you factually is she told me she loved it after called said, I, I wish I could have tipped you. I was like, no, 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 we don't accept that. You know, um, there was text messages, phone calls. And she kept saying, when are you going to post the results? When are you going to post the results? I'm so excited. Cause sometimes I'll do part one, two, three. So there is a course of five days. And when I posted part three, I don't know the chain of events, like what happened. All I know is all of a sudden everybody starts sending me that she had made a video saying that she hates her hair. And by this time I knew, cause when she was in our chair, she shared with us how she got, you know, famous on social media because she looked like a celebrity. And I, I did realize it at the time, like, Oh my God, you do look like this person, but that had no, that wasn't why we brought her in, you know, or anything like that. Um, but she started making this narrative online and I, I call it rage baiting. Hold, hold, I, hold that, on. Yeah. I want to jump in and ask a question. So you post <laughs> one, you post the second one and then between like two and three, like shit went crazy. Oh, when I posted the reveal, because, you know, it was kind of like you didn't see the end yet. You didn't see the finished color. And so when so you I got to the reveal before shit fell off. It was right after I posted the reveal. But everything was fine with she and I, in my mind, I, you know. No, I was just, uh, I was just curious because, you know, had you done the first one and the second one and then shit fell off. Now, now you're like, now what do I do with the reveal? <laughs> you, you well, know what I mean? No, no, no. I, I never posted it on Instagram because of this, but on TikTok it was posted. So to make a long story short, I don't know. All I know is that I called her and said, I didn't know you didn't like your hair. I saw your video and she goes, oh, that's not what I meant. And then she made a video saying, no, no, guys, I love it. The color's great. I think it was just the lighting in the salon. And she showed her hair. She said, it's just too short. So then she said, I really thought the cut was too short. And she kept going on about the cut. But for some reason, everything got directed towards me. And I think it's because I'm so vocal in these. I'm kind of the narrator, the talking. I'm the one that's setting it up, getting everybody together, the team. But it, it I've never seen anything take off so fast in a negative way. It was like, it was, it wasn't like days. It was like hours where, you know, everybody just started. The hate was at a level that I've never experienced before. I'm the worst hairdresser. I should retire. I had people DMing me, telling me that I shouldn't be on this earth anymore, literally because of a hair transformation. Um, and you know, you, you know, you don't deserve anything you have. You're a fraud. You're this. And you know, it's spotty. It's ugly. It's brassy. You know, it, it was just, it was just overwhelming. And she, what happened with hers, I did a video and I thought it was calm. I was trying to calm everyone. She goes, I, I'm going to do a video and fix this. And I did a video and just said, because she went on about how she wanted extensions. You know, it's like, this is free hair. But if she wanted extensions, of course, I would have made it happen. That just wasn't the conversation we had. And I said, clients, I said, for us, for me, what I'm learning, and this was like in the very first few hours, I need to make sure that I'm having my consultations thoroughly to make sure that this doesn't happen, that if the client wants, and for clients, make sure that you're honest with your hairdresser. And if you don't like what we're telling you, communicate that to us. That I thought that that was a fair like video to make. Well, that really upset this girl. And she just started making video after video after video. And then it became an attack on my character everything from I was mean, I ignored her, I was on my phone the whole time, all these things, you know, they're not true. And I started to realize like this is getting out of hand and it just turned into everyone attacking me. The amount of bullying and hate um, got to such a level, like I started turning on my phone and every video was about me. 
I'm a hairdresser and I'm team Taylor. And I think Alfredo's really untalented. I don't know why he's so famous. Like then I scroll the next one. I want to talk about Alfredo. I mean, this guy just makes me sick. Like it was literally like that. Like imagine, like I could not turn on my phone. And so, you know, it's. How are you, like, how are you feeling about, I mean, like, like walk us through like the, the, the feelings. I mean, I know like now it's easy to kind of look at a light lighter, but like it, it must've been devastating. I've had so many negative comments over the years. So many people tell me. But this is different. I mean. That. But it was such a violent. personal attack. It was such a personal attack. And and then all my clients started doing videos defending me. And then this girl did a video saying, guys, I have the inside scoop. He's paying these girls to say nice things about him. It got like that ugly. Like, I'm like, wait, what? You know, I think my clients just saw what was happening and they I had made them feel so good in their appointments. So they were coming on going, I don't know, like my this was not my experience. Like, they're so nice. And this is how it is when you go in. And it got to a level where um, it started to mentally affect me for the first time. And I've been doing this a long time. I'm always able, I'm such, you know me, I'm an, we've known each other a long time. I'm an optimist. It's easy for me to let things roll off and keep moving. But this was to such a degree. There was thousands, not hundreds, thousands of videos. Um, I was on like celebrity gossip pages. It's like Andy Cohen getting fired from Housewives, Alfredo versus Taylor. Like it was that level. Ariana Grande's divorce, mm -hmm. Alfredo versus Taylor part two. Like I was like, you know, it was like, it was on like gossip pages on, on a uh, TikTok. And then I got connect. I, I had a lot of our hair saves have been positively featured in like Yahoo and in, in the independent, you know, big magazines. But then I got called, we want to know like, you know, like negative like they wanted to do a negative story about about it like I was like oh god this is starting to get press like it really got out of hand and then I let it go for a few days and it was starting to die down and I'm just going to put it out there a publication that we all know and some love um, that I used to work for did you know they got somebody from their team to go and fix the hair that I worked all day on. And, you know, uh, as a hair colorist, anybody knows, was it probably my best work? Did I get to the end result that I was hoping for? I got to a much better than when they walked in. So that's why I think I was probably like, it was so much better than when she got there. But we all know that sometimes it can take two or three appointments, our goal on these. So, you know, rather than saying like, hey, the first hairstylist did a lot of the grunt work and it didn't get to where we wanted it. We're going to take it home and this is what we're going to do. Um, they did it in a mean and spiteful way to for some old grudge from six or seven years ago that I long forgot about because I used to work there for a very short time. And they posted it on their page and the owner came on and said, now that's real talent. And when that happened, it was like another avalanche. It cut open the wound. And I started getting not only on TikTok, but on Instagram, hate and bullying and videos. And then it reignited the whole TikTok. So when that was starting to finally die down and I was like, like gonna, I just kept posting. I was like, let's, you know, in my mind, it was going to just be a few days and I, you know, I'd be okay. That sent me over the edge, like, it hurt me so deeply, to be honest with you. I'll just, you know, I wish I could say it didn't, but it did. I didn't eat for about two or three days. Um, I wasn't talking. It was, I was in a very dark place from social media and I'd never experienced that. So my husband, I'm married. He was really worried about me. He's like, I think you need to talk to somebody. So I've been in therapy ever since. But but what really, what really got me through it was um, the hairdressers. You know, you talk about Jacob Khan. Jacob Khan called me. That's how I knew that the post happened on Instagram. He was so upset. And it, it really meant a lot to me. But like huge, I'm not going to, I don't want to name too with him. I, th I know he wouldn't mind, but so many influential artists that I haven't, some of them I hadn't spoken to in years. People that we knew from back in the day when we talked about when we were all together, checking on me, you know, are you okay? I saw what happened, um, you know, I just want you to know that I, I know you and this is going to pass and I know it doesn't seem like it. Um, and then, of course, the artists like Philip and Alex, like that are on my team, they weren't getting any of it. And so they were kind of like, but they were also checking on me constantly. And, and then I even had presidents of brands call me and say, you know, we want you to know that we support you 100 percent. And that's what we saw is not OK. That's not where our industry is. And so thank 
God for all that. Cause I think it, it helped a lot, you know, um, to, to get that kind of support from fellow artists and hairdressers. Cause that's the whole reason I remember I told you earlier, I, I got into this industry cause it was like a safe space and I felt acceptance for the first time in my life. So it really reminded me the other side of it, but it was tough because it felt like my career was over. <laughs> even after doing hair 30 years in the moment, it really felt, you know, uh, larger than myself. Like I didn't know how to get out of it. There was no way to, to speak on it. It's, it's like one of those things where people can say anything they want about you at any moment and they make up this narrative about you and to tell your truth is actually only going to probably make it worse. So you can't really say anything at that point. When it gets that bad, you kind of just have to take it. You know, for me to have come out right then and there and said how I was feeling, telling people that I'm not eating, you know, there was nothing I could say or do, even if I was raw and honest, that was going to make the situation better, you know? And, and that and that's something that um I see happen because, you know, I'm a hairdresser. I'm not Kim Kardashian. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm a freaking hairdresser. And so, like, I, I think about celebrities that like that, that it's like on the daily and how tough that must be. Like, how do they handle that constant scrutiny, you know? And, and, uh, it, it you know, it, I have a lot of, I had a whole new respect because I, I don't know how they do it. Have you changed your consumption? Meaning like, like if, if it, Rogan talks about it all the time, he goes, you know, the worst thing that you can do is read the comments. I mean, since then, do, do you avoid the comments? Do you, what's your relationship with social media now? No, I, I really, I went to therapy. <laughs> I'm still in it. I, you know, of like how awesome, I, I needed, I needed a professional's help, like of like how to deal with it. Because the problem with me, the way I've built my brand, which is different than some, is I think I have a really strong community on social media because I do speak to them. And it's really hard to talk to them if you're not reading their comments. Like I answer and it's all me. I don't have anybody that works for me there. I'm a one person show. There is not a team behind me answering comments. Everything you see on my page, if it's my name up there answering somebody, that is me speaking. Um, and so if I stop reading the comments, then I'm going to stop engaging with my followers. I mean, I would have to just, it would change my brand. I mean, I think my brand is I want to be approachable. I want people to feel like they can talk to me, ask me questions. Um, and so um, I did for a minute to, yeah, I mean, to your point for a few weeks, I took a break. Yeah. Too. Uh, I posted, yeah. I thought it was important. I was like, I wanted, I didn't want to delete those posts because I, I didn't feel I had anything to be ashamed of. So I left them. Bravo. But I did post. <laughs> I was like, my strategy was, Go back, pick some of your best posts that you think is like your best work, reinvent them, do a voiceover, put them out into the universe, but just donate like those, just let them go. So I posted like eight videos back to back to back of like some of my favorite work, but I didn't, I didn't look at the comments because I knew that there was, they were going to be regurgitating like the situation. Um, but that was kind of just to like keep my page going and to kind of push, <laughs> push it down the feed a little bit. Right. That was my strategy. Um, and I and I think it worked well. And I do know a lot of people said, um, we really admired the fact that you just like kept posting through that. You know, it was really difficult, but I was careful to not um, consume, to your point, the comments. And I stopped opening up my DMs because the DMs were even worse than... Oh, in the public. Yeah, can you imagine what was saying in public and then what was being said in private. I mean, that's that's brutal. Yeah, and then somebody did a podcast about me and... They said that that also hurt me. Those things hurt me the most saying things that are just so not true and so uh, unfounded, you know, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. So, so in these moments, how do you um, how do you not react? How do you respond and not react? You know, everybody always says to do that, but people don't understand when in these situations, it's really, really fucking hard to not do that. How did you control? Like, how did you handle that? Mm, I think when you told me I'm in my fifties, I think that's part of it. That's like when you're like, I'm mature, like you've done it. Well, I wouldn't say I'm the most what mature person on the planet. I definitely have a child side, but, um, but, but I have a lot of experience, like 30 okay. years, like 
uh, what I get a lot on social media is people think that, you know, and I'm very proud of this me, but they think that that's, you know, I've, I've had people write comments like you're just an influencer and nothing else. And that's all you'll ever be. It's like, I've been doing hair for 30 years. There wasn't even an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> when I started, yeah. I was like using pay phones to call it. No, not really, but like <laughs> basically. So, you know, my whole career, I've I've faced adversity and had problems. And there's a lot of my story. I just was at the Masters of Balayage retreat with Ryan Whedon. To, and I actually told my story. They, I only had 30 minutes, which was some, but I told my whole story. And it was about this very subject. I showed some of the comments in a PowerPoint and people were gasping. I, you know, because my agent, she screenshotted some of my comments for me, like just to have them like, and I was glad she did because I was able, I was he a lot more healed and I was able to go back and I watched that podcast I was talking about that I wasn't able to watch back then. And I put all of it in my presentation. Um, And I think it's, it's that I, what I realized through that process is I've been through so much. There's so many times in my career that I've fallen down that I've made huge mistakes when I was in my 20s, that I, I thought my career was over, that I had to rebuild myself, that I made poor choices in employment that ended badly that, you know, and maybe I have re regret how I left because I wasn't mature enough at the time to know how to navigate that situation. And it was out of fear. So I think once you go through things like that, hopefully we learn from our mistakes that when these things happen, I'm I know well enough to know as hard as it is that it's so important to take a pause <laughs> and not just blurt out the first thing that's in my mind when I'm emotional. Um, like, you know, to really think it through, to journal, to, to write it down, to talk to a friend. You know, when when the first, I'm really grateful. I almost did it, I'll be honest with you. When the publication did that post, and it was such in such a mean spirited way. I almost reached out to that person, not publicly, but I was just shaking. I couldn't believe it. And somebody called me. I won't say who it is. They called me. It was like an angel. And they said, don't do it. Don't do it. Like, they want you to do it. They're waiting. That's what they want. They want you to react. They want you to and let them know that they got, you know, and thank God, because I stopped, you know, and, and, you know, we're all human, even me, like, you know, I'm that, not, that was, that, was, you know, but I, that was wise advice there that you got there. Like the <laughs> it was. But at the up. moment I saw red, I really just was <laughs> like, I saw, yeah, I wasn't, I was completely, because imagine there's only some, we all have our breaking point. And that was for me in this situation, I was hanging on by a thread at that point. And that was just to kick me in the stomach when I'm down. And I had done a, what was so dangerous about that moment is I had done a post. I had responded, but I said, guys, I'm really struggling right now from this. There's a post I did. And I said, you know, I don't know, like we loved this girl when she was in the salon. Like I was just kind of being honest and open. I wasn't attacking. I was just like, we, you know, this is, this is what I know. And so I'm confused. And so, you know, when somebody tells you they're struggling mentally on social media, you should believe them. You don't kick them and add to it. Like, let's, let's just push them over the edge. You know, like that, to me, that's a really ugly and dangerous thing. But I think people, I think hairstylists are smart and they see everything. Well, you know, Krista, Krista brought up, you know, um, whether to react or to respond. And then I, I know that yeah. we talked a couple months ago and about two months ago, you finally did respond, um, yeah. you know, walking into that. Um, and, and by the way, the whole reason we're talking today is I just and I called you about it. I just yeah. I thought that it was delivered with such grace and such understanding and 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 almost polite, you know, and I don't necessarily know. I'm sure that there was a lot of a, a healing to get to that to get to that polite um that polite place but you know a why why did you just decide to respond and then b um w was there anxiety working up to the response because you know at this point you know no one had talked about it now in a couple months and like were you gonna re were you were you fearful that you'd reopen that whatever no i wasn't fearful i think it's a lot of things i'm in public a lot so i go to a lot of events and so it had died on social media and i had healed 
you know, or whatever you want to say, maybe not fully, but I was in the healing process and I, I had such a different outlook on it. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. I had time to reflect. I think it's always important to see, we all play a part in everything that happens. So I think it's always important to, you know, whether you're right or wrong, isn't really what it's about. It's just what it was there to learn from this. It had already happened. It's out there. But what I would find is when I would go to events, people would ask me about it constantly. So even though there wasn't videos on social media and there wasn't, you know, I would do an educational event and the students would come up to me after and be like, I just want to tell you, or they'd ask me a question in class about it or a hairstylist that I am acquainted with, or, or maybe I've, I know from social, but I've never met before would come up and be like, Hey, I hope, I know you're probably tired of talking about this, but I just have to ask you about what happened, you know? And so that was really what prompted me. I thought, you know, I think that since so many people are asking me, that probably means that outwardly people that I don't see every day, they're also asking about it, you know, because this was such a big thing. So I thought, am I, am I ready to address it, to sort of relive it? And now is it okay? like, am I ready to respond? And so I, I said, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to say my true feelings and then I'm going to watch it back and make sure that, you know, I feel comfortable with, with my, you know, with my delivery of it. I did that one take. I don't rehearse stuff. If I need to rehearse it, then I feel like it's not as authentic. Like it, if, and so, so I did it. And when I watched it back, I, I felt like it was true to how I really felt. Um, everything I said was true. It's not like mar a marketing ploy. It's, it's, it's really how I, how I feel about it. I think, um, I think it's important to have grace with people. I think it's important for us to have grace with ourselves. Um, and I think as leaders in the industry, it's important to set the right example because we do have some leaders that are setting the wrong example. So it's up to me. Like I thought, you know, why not address it and lead by example of, of how I feel like, like we should be in who our industry really is. Like we need examples like that out there. Um, and I think that was the driving force behind, behind that, behind that video. Yeah. Thanks for being that example. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Okay. I mean, and also as a way to kind of close the chapter, you know, of it um, yeah. and, and to move on. Um, and uh, and I thought, as it, you know, I what I think about is the young stylists a lot because we lose so many people in the industry. And I thought I don't want someone to be afraid to post their work because they saw that um, we did this to bring kindness to social media, to uplift people, to give people hope and inspiration. And from one bad experience, it turned into this negative, huge, the exact opposite cat of what the whole point was to begin with. So I thought, you know, I wanted to speak to that too, to not just young stylists, but to stylists in general who are afraid to build their businesses on social media because of behavior like that. Um, so I was really talking to them too. I thought it was important, you know, um, did, yeah. um, did you, uh, so your, I, I'm going to say models or, or, you know, these DIY, like, uh, uh, fixer uppers, you know, this thing, by the way, I totally see a TV show, like, you know, the, the those makeover shows, like I totally see a TV show of like makeover DIY th kind of thing. So, you know, somebody should pick that up. Um, but uh, what, how has your, I think you touched on a little bit earlier, but how has your vetting process, uh, changed? <laughs> well, it has, I mean, I, I won't just blindly, you know, uh, again with Taylor, like I wish her well. I meant it when I said it. I don't know her. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know what that was about, you know, and so I'm not going to pretend like I do. I'll never understand it. And that's OK. I don't need to. Um, I've moved on. But but moving forward, I do. Like we're, we're doing one in two weeks with this girl named Morgan. And I actually was in Miami and she lives in Miami. I met her. We had dinner. She's amazing. She's absolutely lovely. And I'm really looking forward to us hopefully helping her with her hair. Um, I have longer conversations with them. Um, I look back months into their social media and it's nothing. And also I'll be honest, I have them sign an NDA. 
<laughs> I'm just I'm always going to keep it real with you guys. I mean, after that, because so many things were said that were not true about my character and it was so personal that I realized like I'm being a lot, you know, it's one thing I ha always have them sign that I can use their image and do these videos. But, you know, I changed it. I made it a little bit more, you know, like about like that they can't just come on social media and make stories up that aren't true. Um, and, and that was, I think, important. It's for, not just for me, it's for everybody. Cause there's other people that are a part of these and on the team and I would hate for it to happen to them. So, um, so that changed, you know, and it's unfortunate, you know, you wish that life, you can just do things and trust everybody and, and, um, everything, but you know, that's just not life. So it made me a lot more smarter. Sometimes I don't realize this is going to sound silly, but I don't realize that I have 1.7 million followers on TikTok. I mean, I realize that sometimes when I see a number or I see the comments or when something like this happens and I'm like on a gossip page with like celebrities, like I get it. And when I see some certain people that follow me that I'm like, wow, I can't believe this person. I get it. But it's just hard to like, I don't know how to explain it. It's, I don't. I, I, I don't it's, it's like, it, it's how do you conceptualize what 1.7 million is and how do you conceptualize yeah, and, and, that's and that it's million. you're in a different ball game and like you have to protect yourself whether you want to or not. You have to be a little bit more. Well, you have, you to, have to think about things that I don't want to think about. I just want to create. I just want to make the video. I just want to save this person's hair. I just want to make something that people enjoy. But unfor the unfortunate side is it does get bigger than yourself and you have to think about it in a different way. So I'm definitely, it definitely changed, but not in a bad way. In fact, I think it's been a good thing because I'm getting to know these ladies a lot better. I'm building even stronger relationships with them. Um, and in the end, when we, by the time we get together, we, we know a lot more about each other. And, and I think it's, it's been a good thing. That's yeah. Amazing, dude. I, I'm just, I, I'm I'm so proud of of kind of how you've you've landed this, you know, and 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 to be able to move move forward with it. Um, oh, to bring it back for a second, when you did the uh, the rebuttal, it wasn't really a rebuttal, but when you did the follow up, was uh, what was a was the response mostly positive? Yes, and so that's so. There's two things. Like I've done two videos actually. I did one just recently where you talked about it. Uh, uh, about um you know Krista about the um the client stories and how many I've done um so when I did the first one it was all everybody was and I didn't know I did it just to do it I was ready for negativity I was expecting it to be honest I was expecting it to be a even split and I was mentally prepared therapist and everything's like okay I'm gonna do this like I'm 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 okay like whatever they say is fine but um, it was so overwhelmingly positive and people were saying things like, oh my God, you have so much grace. Like, wow, this is, so, you're a class act. I, I, you know, I, I can't believe like that you're able to make this video. I didn't think, obviously when I made it, I wasn't thinking about those things. I was just speaking from my heart of how I really feel about it. Um, but I did notice it was really positive. And also some people said, I want to apologize to you. I made one of those videos um, about you. I had a lot of those comments. Um, and I, and I, you know, I realized that I jumped the gun and, you know, mob mentality is so real. It is so real. And, um, I had a lot of people DMing me saying, you know, I want to tell you that I made some negative comments back then and watching your video, I realized that like, you know, I, I was jumping to conclusions. So I, it was, it was a very positive. And then just recently there was a, you know, somebody sent me a video. They're like, I don't want to send you this. I'm like, well, now you have to send it to me. <laughs> and, and it was that girl, you know, saying she was, I, I call it rage baiting. She was saying that these women are purposely damaging their hair so that I'll save it. And she said it in a very open-ended way to insinuate, you know, to take away these people's, to my mind, dignity um, and to create a rage bait where everybody starts coming in and like, yeah, they're lying and it's this. And, you know, it was, it was really about the client. And that's what, that's why I made a, the second video. Cause I thought, okay, well now you want to just say that you don't like the hair I do, or you don't, you know, like I, it's not worth my time. But when you start going into every one of these women that came in, I just felt it was really in poor taste. And what I noticed, if I'm going to be honest, is I noticed some of the comments, speaking of negative comments, it's just a certain group of hairstylists that I see 
on post all the time, not just mine. It's people that are influential in the industry and they drum up negativity. They come on and say something about the person being a terrible hairdresser or a terrible educator. And then the other friend comes in and echoes it. And then it starts to create a mob mentality, I call it. And not the good kind of mob, like a master's of balayage. <laughs> I mean, mob, like angry mob. And and I see it and, and I notice sometimes that it's a certain group, not always, but sometimes. And I noticed it. And, you know, it was it was somebody that has has, for some reason, I don't know, negatively towards me for years and it goes back to what you said of what changed from us all being together to you know this like a uh, spiteful you know you brought it up earlier and so I did the video and I and I just said you know I I like these comments like let's talk about it like I can't like you know uh, saying that I'm a terrible hairdresser and all this it, you asked me earlier if other people have done these hair saves it's like go for it. You know, I came back a little bit stronger, <laughs> do it. Like I'll, I said, I'll pay for it. You know, I, I will, if you know, I will, you know, make this happen for you. And that was probably me being the most spicy that you're going to see me ever get. That's like as spicy as Alfredo gets, you know, um, I'm never going to like attack someone, but it was just saying like, can, you know, this is ridiculous. And, and when you bring my clients into it, stop picking on these clients. Like, do not pick on these ladies. And that's why I told their stories. I asked each of them, by the way, do you mind if I tell people a little bit more about your story? Because some of my clients wrote me what, what the reason I made that second video is they said, I saw this video and it hurt my feelings. And that just sent me over the edge. Of course, yeah. like, do people really think that I lied? You know, that, you know, and I was like, people don't think that you lie. This is a small group of people trying to ignite something on social media. And so they all said it was okay. And that's why that video that you said that you like, you know, where I, I kind of went each one down the line, not all of them, but some, and, and said, you know, let's just stop picking on these ladies. Like they have been through a lot. And sometimes we don't know everything about everybody. And I even talked about me, like there's so many things people don't know about me and my career um, that maybe I should start sharing more. Like it, it's been tough. It's been a tough 30 years. It's been an amazing, beautiful 30 years. But, you know, if, if I gave up every time I fell down, like what happened with Taylor uh, this year, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today. Like, you know, that's life. It's I wish I could tell hairstylists out there that it gets easier <laughs> or the more success you have, that everything, you know, all your problems will be answered it's just new it's new problems but it's like how we navigate through them how we get through them with grace how we learn from them that's the key to success in this industry i think you, you know, know? I, you kind of brought that up and yeah. you know, if, if if you've been a colors for you know more than a few years you know you you and you've done these corrections a you know how challenging they are and and, and b you know, to your point, like, like the results can sometimes take, you know, a few appointments to, to, to get to, or the desired results. So, you know, it, it, it's for me. And when I, and, and when I finally kind of read back on it, you know, it was shitty that that wasn't the understanding from hair, hair, hair people, you know, like, like, like it just, but again, I, yeah. it, it, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me finish. Yeah. Point here. But also like when, when these things happen, when your client walks out, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a room full of hairdressers that, um, that see it, but you know, to your point with, with your following now, it's like everybody says, so, so the problem is, 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 is magnified to a level that, that we can't possibly understand. And then, you know, we all have confidence issues, particularly, you know, when we're getting shit on, you know, so then to, to double down on that I, anyways, I, nothing but empathy and, and, and all that just for that. Oh yeah. The imposter syndrome is real for sure. During that time, I was like, am I? A terrible hairdresser, you know what I mean? Well, I've it's tried to quit all this success, like it, you know, like of course I was like in my head, like anyone would be. Um, and I think that's you know what resonated so much with people when I meet them out in the world is they you think, oh, they're not gonna relate to this, but they do. One person came out to me and started, she's like, uh, hearing you talk today, like she was crying, she says, somebody wrote a Yelp review about me in my salon and it's still up and I can't get it taken down. And I just feel like such a failure. And every time, you know, um, you know, it, 
they relate to it in one way because we've all been there or had a client call the salon and say, you know, or, or nowadays they take to social media sometimes, you know, I see it a lot, like the client thing, it's a trend of coming on and berating your hairdresser. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I think that, I think people can relate to it on, on some level. Um, we've all been there, but I think it's, I think that we're at a turning point. I'm just going to leave you with this. I really do. Because when I did that post that I just talked about where I told the story, if you read the comments, everybody is saying they are tired of the negativity on social media and they're all hairdressers. They said, we're over this. Meanness is out. Kindness is in. We're sick of it. Um, and I've really noticed it lately more. And I was just at that event, a few events and hairdressers are coming up to me saying, we need to start commenting more. We need to start sh being you know, uplifting each more like we used to on social media to drown out all of this negativity and, and name calling and spitefulness on social media. I, I think people are, are tired of it. I really do. I like how you said drown out and not like get rid of, because obviously it's always going to be there, but I like how you said drown out because really that will power over any negativity. I did a call to action. And when I just, I gave a speech, I, I told my, like it's, it's conversation for another time, but I really told my story of all the things I've been through in 30 years and people, I didn't know how they were going to react. I was so nervous because it wasn't me doing hair. It was just talking and being really vulnerable and everybody, a lot, not everybody, a lot of people were like crying in the audience at the end, but I, I gave them a call to action at the end. I said, look, you guys are all feeling, we're all in this feeling moment, but like, I'm going to give us a call to action. What if we all make a promise that every day for the next five days, we're going to go on social media and we're going to randomly write something really nice on somebody's post, you know, so maybe, you know, them, maybe you don't know them. Maybe it's just, let me see. Imagine if we all, everybody in this room, a thousand people, we all did that, right? That's 5,000 positive posts in one week, 20,000 in one month, like together we can change the narrative. That's, I was like, can we all agree? And everybody agreed. I was like, it's one, one second of your day. Take you, even if, even if you're busy, put a heart, fine, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but imagine like if we all did that more, I do think that we get so caught up in our own social media sometimes that we forget. Um, even like us artists, like Jacob, I'm saying Jacob again, just because we talked about him earlier. Now, you know, like I see him do it. I see certain people, there's certain artists that I see. I try to do it a lot. But I think we can do it more, support each other, but also be supporting uh, new creators and or just educators, hairstylists, people, you know, in behind the chair in the salon that are posting to try to get new clients. We should really be more mindful and start going out there and, you know, spreading love and positivity. Like a comment can change a positive comment on someone's post can like change their entire day. Um, and it's so easy to do. It takes, what, five seconds. I, I love that. I, I love that as a yeah. call of action. And, and, and yeah. you know, I think that, I think that even if you're listening in, that's, that's the call of action here, you know, just, just yeah. to reach out to, you know, five people a day, you know, and just, just with a heart or, or, or whatever. I, that, I, I, I love that, you know, I mean, think how, yeah, think, think how, think where you have to be in your life to sit there on your phone, looking for something to throw hate or negativity on. Like, just think of your mindset. I would never, I can't even think of it. But like, I think rather than, you know, I know sometimes we do like, you know, it, it is, I think it it is something sometimes to call it out a little bit or to, you know, humorize it a little bit. Because sometimes you gotta, you have to, because it's silly. But I think it's also, it's like, how do we as an industry figure out why? And that's a, that's a whole other, like, we need the, all the greatest minds, but like, why why are they so angry out there that they're choosing to spend their time imagine if they took that time because that takes more time than writing a nice comment imagine if they took that time and put it into their business you know like yeah. just imagine how different their life would be their their outlook on the industry and and then they wonder why they're not busy they wonder why they're not getting new clients. They wonder why they're not getting the job that they want or whatever it is, or the contract, you know, it, 
people see everything. Social media is forever and how we behave. It affects, it's, it's like a trickle down effect. So I am, um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but I think I've never, I mean, I've never done that because I, I've never found caddy as being cool. You know, it's no, cool. it's no but I mean, cool me it, it is a thing. And I think it, it's, it's telling us, it is telling us something that those, you know, that well, that I'm, feeling I'm gonna, is out there. I, I'm, I'm going to shout out my dear friend, Olivia um, Thompson. She yeah. Or Smalley, but and this is, this is a true story. Like we were, we were hanging out together. Um, I think I've told this story on the podcast, if not, whatever. Um, but we were sitting at a table at a bar and um, it was Olivia and I and, and two other women. And they started to get a, a, a little more catty than, 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 than I liked. Certainly. You know, I, I get uncomfortable in those situations, you know? Yeah. And Olivia was amazing. Um, I don't remember the word she used, but basically she was like, listen, I love that you guys are sitting here with me and I want to continue to sit here with you, but I don't do this. And if you're going to do this, I'm going to leave. You know, but but she never embarrassed them. She never she called them out, but she left them with grace, you know, and to me, it was the most baller move I've ever seen in my life. Um, A, because it was delivered with such grace and B, you want to know what? You know, what the first thing I thought of, listen, I know that if I'm out of the room, ain't nobody talking smack about me if Olivia's in the room. Right. Like, I know she's coming to defend yeah. me or come to say, like, I don't play that game. And I loved that so much. Now, I will tell you. Whenever I'm with Olivia, like, and I'm not a smack talker anyways, but it's always in my head, like, don't start talking shit about Alfredo because Olivia's going to come and get you. If it's, if it <laughs> I love her anyway. I mean, that it is a power move, but I agree. I would do the same thing. I mean, I don't want to hear that. Um, I was actually at a dinner <laughs> with people. It was a while, not too long ago. And there was one person at the table that sort of started to go there. And I, it, to me, it was just so opposite of my experience. So I said, you know, I had to, I just called, <laughs> I was like, I appreciate you sharing that, but like, I'm just surprised to hear that. Cause I have the, I actually have had such different experiences and I find them to be such an, a nice person. I said, maybe they were having a bad day, you know, like sure. we all have bad days. And then they just got, yeah. they just stopped. But I was like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that here. We're not going to sit here. And it's interesting. Somebody like that you barely know, like you met one time. Yeah. Like it, it's, yeah. We, 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 we got to get off of this call real quick, but, um, yeah. Crap, I forgot where I was going with this. But I know um, we got, we got sidetracked. <laughs> I think here we go. I, here's, here's where I was going, Alfie. Here's where I was going is that a lot of times when the conversation opens with this, it's looking for permission to do this. Mm hmm. Right. And, and, and if you can cut it, if you can cut it off before it begins to boil or before it gets big, then it's over with, you know what I mean? Like, like no one's going to like live there anymore. So, you know, a lot of times it's just like, what is this conversation? It, it It's one step past small talk for a lot of people. For me, it's never, it never is, but. Our industry is about community. I'm sorry. I don't care. Like we, yes. Like I said earlier, the louder, the negativity can be louder than the positivity but the reason I came to this industry 30 years ago has not changed. At the end of the day, hairstylists have each other's backs. When I've seen it time and time again, when bad things happen, people are in trouble. We all come together as a community and want to help most of us, the majority of us. And I think to your point, it's, it's what we allow and also what we show the world. And I think we need to just start being louder, like I, drowning it out, whatever you want to call it. Um, with who we really are and show, show the industry leading by example is just so important. I, I agree. And, and unfortunately yeah. we have some yeah. big, some big influential people um, that, that, you know, kind of seem to double down on, on the cattiness and, and well, that's just, and that, that's, but we need to start holding them accountable. And I, and I called brands if you're listening and I've never said this before, but I'm, I'm starting to say it now, stop giving them your money. Like, you are allowing negative behavior by supporting brands that support negativity, cattiness, and ugliness in the industry and letting them lead by their example. And that's why you get people at a table with wonderful Olivia that she's having to shut down. They're only, they're, they're emulating what they see and what they think is cool. And it's unfortunate, but again, it's, it's, it's the lesser there's, there's so much more positivity and there's so many incredible leaders that are just absolutely, I mean, you brought up Sam earlier. Talk about an example of, I, I feel like I talk about Sam a lot on podcasts, but he's an icon. 
Sam says hello to you to every single person that he encounters, gives them a hug, positive. I love what you're doing. He tells me the same thing every time, but I don't care. I'll hear it every time. Hey, hey, doing what you're doing. I love seeing you out there. Don't ever stop. That's the kind of leader that those the, that is an example of how you be at that juncture in your career. He is to me, you know, it should be the the example. Like, he's, he's definitely the, the north star for the industry, and 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 yeah. th this is great. And, and I'm going to set you up, Alfie. I, ho I hope you pick yeah. up on it. It's like uh, when he hugs you. What does he whisper in your ear? Oh God, I don't know. What do you mean? What does he whisper in my ear? He, um, he'll always, he'll hug you. He'll hug you right to right instead of left to left. Right. Cause instinct is to go left to left. Yeah. Yeah. He'll yeah. Right to right. And then he'll whisper in your ear, heart to heart, brother, heart to heart. Oh yeah. No, no, no. He does. He does. I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What did he whisper in my ear? What do you know? <laughs> heart to heart, man. Heart to heart. Yeah. He says, he says heart to heart all the time. And then he just always tells you that he loves you and supports you. How you do he And he looks you right in the eye and he you can tell he actually is asking you a genuine question he wants to know that's it yeah somebody told me the other day they they called him to ask him a formula question and he answered in one ring <laughs> he had given them their phone number like four years before and they're like oh he's never gonna answer <laughs> they can pick up the phone and gives them an entire like this is what you're gonna do like you know it's crazy like it, you know but i think um i think we're also i'll leave you with this we're at a point in our industry right now where hairdressers like i said i believe there's a shift people are tired of it and they're also their eyes are open they are seeing who's who and people are showing their true colors and i think you're starting to see people wake up for lack of a better word a little bit and that's why you're seeing certain leaders not have as much influence as they once had people are and they could change it easily by changing their behavior um probably not going to but I, I think social media, that's a, a one of the good sides of social media that can be negative, but you're also able to really see everything. People kind of show themselves to you eventually. And then you have a free mind to make your own decision of like what part of the industry you want to engage with and how you want to interact with people and what entities and, you know, that you want to be a part of. That's amazing. Krista, do you have any uh, uh, parting words? No, just... Thank you. Thanks for coming on here. Talking it was so about great. It. I was so happy. I was looking forward example. to chat with you. And um, thank you both for having me and having such an important conversation. Alfie, I love you so much. Thank you so much for, for <laughs> the friendship over the years. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll see you on the road a little bit. And uh, Alfredo Lewis, Krista Bartik, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. <laughs>